Hey guys, how are you? Uh, welcome to the second class uh, of virtual reality. In this class, we're going to talk about equipments, okay? Uh, but before we get started, I want to talk about the equipment that I'm going to use so that you guys can understand it better, okay? So hold on, I'm going to change the camera and I'll show it to you. So guys, uh, this is the question two and the equipments that come together. Actually, I'm going to separate all of them. I bought all of it. So, so what comes inside the box are the controls, the headset and the charger. Okay. The charger already comes with this plug and the cable to charge the headset glasses. Okay. Uh, let's get started talking about the headset because I think it's pretty important. I'm going to give you some tips how to take care of this. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to introduce you this right here. You can see these four points here. These points are actually cameras. They serve as sensors for you to keep track of the controls and also have the tracking of your hands. So the Quest glasses have the hand tracking that uh, can recognize your hand, you know, so you can pick up the objects. Okay. Um, besides, uh, it's important to say that these lenses uh, should not come into direct light because uh, they can burn the lenses and destroy your headset. So uh, you have to be careful about it. Okay, so be careful about it. Uh, you can clean it uh, with a traditional lens cleaner. Or you can also clean it with toilet paper, which is how I do it. It won't damage the lens too much, okay? I'm going to separate a little here. I took them apart. Uh, you can attach, for example, uh, a gadget here to stay further away from the lens for, for those who wear glasses like me. Uh, so if you wear glasses, you have to use a gadget to keep your eye away from the lens and not scrape the lens of your eyes glasses with the headset lens. So it's a really important tip that, that I use a lot and I really recommend this. Uh, I really like this strap. It's very simple and it's Velcro. Uh, you can change both the distance of your head and the circumference, for example, uh, of your head right here, okay? So you have these two adjustments to make. What happens that people, after they use it, they don't adapt very well. I don't know if it's because of the shape of the head, but they end up buying another strap. Um, there's a charger holder on the back. The most common on the market today is the Bobo VR that you can put a charger back here and increase the battery life, okay? For people who are going to use the glasses for ArcVis, uh, the battery is enough. It lasts a lot for people who use it for ArcVis. It lasts about four hours straight if it's 100% charged. Even if you're playing, you know, uh, listening to music with a lot of things, it, it, it lasts a lot. Uh, about the controls guys uh well these are the controls uh they are very anatomical uh, that's the way you hold it okay you have the the space for your fingers okay so when we're going to use for archivist we're going to press this button to uh to grab things okay this button here that is the trigger uh, we're going to use to select the things. It's like the uh, left bu button of the mouse. Okay, you select over here with this button. Um, about locomotion, it has this thumbstick here, and we have these buttons here. We're going to use the A uh, to teleport in the scene. Um, we use the thumbstick in a blueprint class we will also use it to move however to move on its own axis okay so there are two types of locomotion for example let's suppose this is a person uh and the left thumbstick 
For example, the locomotion is going to be like this. Uh, let's see. For example, I can move like this or like this. Okay, perfect. Uh, on the right thumbstick, uh, when I press to the right, it's going to rotate like this. When I press to the left, it's going to rotate like this. So that's how we're going to work in our ArcViz project. We have both slide movement and snap movement. Besides that, guys, I wouldn't say uh, some tips for you. For example, you will have to buy a cape here. So I recommend you to buy a cape. It's it's very long, this cable. It's like two meters. It is a huge cable. Uh, it is a USB cable 3.0. And this one is USB-C. That coincidentally is the, is the same as this connector here of the headset. Um, this cable, besides charging your headset, it's going to serve, uh, for example, to, to connect on your computer. So uh, you can connect your headset on your computer and use uh, the computer hardware instead of using the headset's internal hardware. It's really good. And it's nice that it's long for you to have your mobility and you can move without any problem, okay? So this USB is going to be connected to the computer and this one is going to be the headset. Oh, I I'm sorry, I, I mixed it up. So this one is going to be connected to your computer and the other one is going to be connected to the headset. Uh, now let's get back to the computer so that I can give some technical specs of Quest 2 compared to the other headsets, all right? After we saw some specs about the visuals and some tips for Quest 2, um, I wanted to bring you uh, a moment of technical specs, okay? Uh, what we can see of technical differences uh, compared to headsets that are on the market, okay? So I'm here on this website where they also sell headsets and I have here some specifications. Okay, so let's check it out. Besides, uh, I, I have this here. Let's see, right here. This table showing uh, PSVR, okay. Uh, this table here, I don't have the PSVR to compare. So I separate this one to see the PSVR 2 and PSVR 1. Valve Index and Quest 2, I already have the information on the other table, okay. So let's go. Um, one of the main things that we work when uh, we're talking about uh, the headset is the display. It is our screen, our visual, and a lot of people don't know, but that impacts a lot in the visual quality of our headset. Okay, so we can see here some headsets use LCD, others use a mode, um, and PSVR uses this. Okay, and what is the difference between each of them? What, what are the impacts? Well, uh, let's get started from the low quality to high quality. I think it's going to be easier to explain it like this. Okay, let's go. Uh, LCD here, Reverb 2, uh, Quest 2, uh, ATC, uh, Involve Index, all of them, uh, they have LCD. Our LCD screen, when we're using uh, in our project, a lot of times we're going to see a situation where uh, we have a shadow, a texture, uh, and it can't reach the absolute black of our project. And this lights up a pixel like it's a dark gray, okay? What is the impact of this? Uh, in your final project, you will not achieve a graphic quality in your project because every time a black appears in your project, a dark gray will appear, okay? Because it cannot simulate absolute black on this LCD screen. Uh, cool. Uh, we have uh, the second generation. Oh, let me close it here. Uh, so we have the second generation of LCD screens that come here for PSVR 2 and PSVR. The first technical uh, difference that this display shows us uh, is that uh, this display already has this absolute black. 
So instead of lining a pixel dark gray, it just leaves the pixel off. So it doesn't light that pixel, okay? So it ends up being a higher quality, a better graphic fidelity for your project. Uh, nice. So the third generation of displays, we have the a mode uh, that is represented for this one. Okay. Um, this is a mode here. It's like an evolved OLED. Okay. The image is way better. Okay. More fluid and it, it's way better okay inside your headset so it brings a better fluidity when we are working with a mode perfect okay so we have the tables here if you guys want to compare okay um, psvr uh, another point that we have to pay attention uh, to choose our headset the re resolution okay Obviously, uh, the more is the resolution, the better is the headset, okay? Okay, so uh, we will have more advantages if the re resolution is higher, yeah. So these headsets that we have here, we have the HC Vive Pro. Uh, we have this other one, uh, the other one here, perfect. So first, second, and third. Uh, the Quest 2 that I have, uh, it is the in fourth. Uh, it's not a, a bad resolution, but it's not an excellent resolution. Okay. Um, the Vive Pro Two uh, with this resolution per eye. Well, this per eye. It's very important to understand this uh, because if we learn these uh, specifications, these technical specifications, that's gonna help you to understand that instead of processing your hardware and needing to process a screen you will need two screens because you will have a processing for the right eye and one for the left okay so it's not such a simple thing to have a hardware for vr they need to be a little more robust because the processing happens in a duplicate way perfect uh, third point here the ipd is basically the distance between your pupils, okay? So here you're asking if there is an IPD adjustment mechanism. That is, between one lens and another, you can change the distances, okay? Because each person has a different size between the retinas, okay? So if you put an IPD distance based on your distance as a human being, you greatly improve the focus issue, okay? Um, all the actors here have some kind of mechanical IPD adjustment, which is very interesting. Um, PSVR even has the eye track, which is basically a camera that films your eye. And so uh, it can see where exactly you're looking in your display, okay? And it manages to work with a localized focus adjustment. And then it simulates the issue of looking as a human being in a much better way. Because when we are, we are looking at a specific point, that point where we are looking has a maximum focus. And then at around, this is already getting less clear. So this can simulate this type of behavior, okay? Um, fourth point, personal frequency in general. The higher the frequency, the more interesting is for the user, okay? Here our Valve Index has the highest absolute frequency of the competitors, so followed by headsets that have a frequency of 120 Hz, okay? Here about the glass with Quest 2, it already has an update that runs 120 Hz, okay? So it doesn't take into account that 90 or 72 Hz. But yes, uh, you can opt for either of these two, but it already has an update there for 120 Hertz developer, okay? Fifth point, uh, the weight issue. Honestly, this doesn't impact much for us when buying the headset, because for architectural use, we don't use the headset on our head for a long period of time. So it doesn't get in the way. 
the issue weight, whether it's heavy or light, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, but if you choose a gaming headset such as the PSVR, uh, which is focused on games, then uh, I advise you to go to the store and test to see if it's heavy or not, because normally the gaming headset will stay for a longer period of time, right? Uh, another important point here is that the issue of cameras. Basically, every headset has a type of camera or tracking, okay? Uh, in the case here, these tables only show the existence or not of the cameras. Most of them have a camera system with the exception of the ATC Vive because it has a different tracking system. It does infrared laser tracking, so it doesn't necessarily need cameras. It has its own tracking, perfect. The most interesting thing now uh, is the issue of cables. It is very important for you to understand if your headset needs some kind of cable or not, okay? When we are working with PC VR headset uh, that needs external hardware to run, they are all with cables, okay? So PSVR 2, PSVR, Reverb, ATC Vive, ATC Vive Pro, Valve Index. So uh, they all need cables, okay? Because they are all glasses uh, that need help of some external hardware. In this case, a computer or a PlayStation, okay? Uh, the Quest 2, as we already know, it doesn't necessarily need the cable. You can use it with a cable and without cable, transforming it into a PSVR headset or a standalone headset as you want, okay? We talked about the difference between PSVR and standalone. Remembering, once again, PC VR is that glass that you need a computer and standalone is a, that glasses that you don't need uh, for a computer, okay? Guys, in general, after analyzing all these topics here, including this other secondary table, which one do I believe is the best headset for you? Well, what I cannot say is which is the best headset for you, but what I can make clear for you is that you need to identify your need. Now, talking about my, my needs, I can say from my own experience, I was very well tainted by Quest 2, okay? It has an interesting resolution, a frequency of 120 hertz, uh, which has had updates, and it's very cost effective. So it is very affordable hardware, okay? I usually say that Quest 2 is the input hardware for those who are working with virtual reality. But of course, we have much superior hardware, for example, uh, with a higher resolution, with a better display. So there are hardware that have a higher quality. But these hardwares are necessarily PC VR. Okay, I opted for glasses that don't necessarily need a computer, but if it's necessary, I can use them. So, in general, the Quest 2 glasses are great value for money, okay? But if you want to serve a more select audience, mainly the automobile industry and etc., then you need PC VR glasses with a more robust computer too. Uh, but then uh, an ATC Vive or a PainX would be interesting, okay? So, in general, uh, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you, you guys enjoyed this class. Uh, the purpose of this class was to present a little bit about the headsets that we have on the market, uh, give some tips and suggestions for the Quest 2 glasses, and help you. If you have any questions, use the comments below or our Facebook group or our email of support. So I hope you guys like it and see you.